little part of West Coast Blues by Blind Blake. Blind Blake was probably the foremost ragtime guitarist in the 1920s and early 30s. Blind Blake started his recording career with two songs. That song, West Coast Blues, was on the B side and on the A side was a song called Early Morning Blues. Much slower. But still had that ragtime bounce. Early one morning, my baby made me so Early one morning, my baby made me sore. I'm going away to leave you. I ain't coming back no more. Sometimes they were faster, sometimes they were slower, but very often they contained this uh, this rundown from G, G7, C, E flat 7, G, and back to D7, which is very attractive. But with a man like Blake, who always wanted to push the boundaries and do something very exciting, and play music that was perhaps difficult for other musicians to play, he was always looking for new ways to present his music. But the problem is, when you start your career with a, a piece like West Coast Blues, where do you go from there? How do you improve on that? For example, in West Coast Blues, instead of just playing an alternating bass, you can hear that he's doing something special with the basses. He's doubling up or he's rolling his thumb across two bases. This is what it looks like in slow motion with a piece of tablet for you to try. We'll take a look now at uh, Blind Blake's thumb roll in some detail. Uh, please remember that I'm using a cap on the first fret, as is my habit. Take it easy and have fun. <laughs> interested in making new variations for his themes and for his work in C he produced some clones that were very much like West Coast Blues, for example Southern Rag. In Southern Rag he used his fingers much much more, although he did still include the thumb rolls to improve the syncopation. It sounds a little like this. <laughs> Take a look at the tablature and my hands in slow motion and have a go yourself. Have fun. Another slower variation that we can hear in the key of C from Blake is in a tune like Guitar Chimes, which is slower. It doesn't feel as slick or as fast, but in fact it's nearly four minutes long and it's, uh, it, it's varied. Each section is different from the last one. So although it's not too difficult to play, it's difficult to keep everything in place and to memorize it all the way through.
when we look at Blake's guitar work in the key of G, there's some very fast slick pieces here and incredibly he sings at the same time. But when you've already started your career with something like West Coast Blues and you're already the foremost ragtime guitar player around, what do you do? How do you to change things? How do you improve on, on your playing? One of the things that Blake started to do was to experiment with the timing of his basses, like in uh, with this song called Wilson Dam. <laughs> That's quite a fun way to play. It needs a lot of thumb control. You need to be aware of where your thumb is going because it doesn't follow the normal ragtime pattern. Take a look at this. Another thing that Blake might do is to double up on the timing, even while he's singing. It sounds something like this. I'm going to play uh, a little part of Tootie Blues. <laughs> She'll spend the night with you I'm wild about my tootie The only thing I crave I'm wild about my tootie The only thing I crave Now my sweet tootie She's going to get me to my grave I hope you've enjoyed this short video looking at the tips and tricks of Blind Blake and how he produced that wonderful syncopated music. I have a pack of lessons to show how to play many of Blind Blake's songs and you can find it in the link in the description below. Take it easy, be real, have fun.